All right. Looks like we're live. Let me know uh, if you can see and hear me out there. I'm going to wait to see if I get any response from you guys. Let's see. All right. Okay, I know there's going to be about a 30 second lag, uh, so it's totally fine. I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Um, I don't even know, you know, this is going to be my very first YouTube live stream, so this is all going to be new to me. Uh, so if we get through this uh, with, without any hiccups, it's going to be a miracle, okay? So just bear with me, please. Uh, okay, great. I see that you guys can hear me. Awesome. Okay, well, let's see. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to, if you guys uh, could, if you would like to uh, share this video, you can click on the link below. Uh, hit the share button, share it on Facebook or Twitter or something, see if we can get some more, uh, some more people in here to watch. Um, so I'm going to be teaching you a song today. We're gonna, I'm going to go over the song, Have You Ever Seen the Rain? by Credence Clearwater Revival. Uh, I'm going to teach it, though. I'm going to go a little bit more in-depth than I normally do in the videos you may have seen on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to kind of uh, go from the very beginning, how I find a song on the Internet, uh, how I transpose it to a, a key that I like. Um, and I'm going to teach you all of those things and the chords that I use and why. So I hope you're excited. Uh, please ask any questions that you have uh, along the way. You can start typing questions now and I will scroll through um, the feed towards the end and I'll answer any questions you guys have. I'll try to get to all of them uh, before the end. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Let me go ahead and pull up, uh, before I do, let's see, if any of you guys uh, don't have, I'm going to be using the chords that I use on uh, my cheat sheet. If any of you guys don't have my cheat sheet, you can get it up on the, uh, the top right corner. Um, where would that be? Up here somewhere. Uh, there is that little I, and you can click on there. There's a link to get the chord family cheat sheet uh, and to download the chord chart for the song that we're going to be learning today. Uh, so those are your uh, resources there. Uh, let's see. I see you guys. Hi, Ann. Hi, Roshan. Vince, Jeff, nice to see you guys. All right, so the song, Have You Ever Seen the Rain? So if we take a look here, I'm going to go into Google, uh, and I'm going to type in, Have You Ever Seen the Rain? Chords. Okay, and normally the first one that pops is going to be Ultimate Guitar. That's normally where I find the chords uh, for songs. Uh, so I'm going to click on that, and it looks like this song is in the key of C. Uh, normally I can tell that by the first chord of the song. So the very first chord is a C. That's not always going to be the case, but normally that is the case. Uh, the other way to tell, if we look through all the chords of the song, we have C, G, uh, F, and A minor. Uh, let's see, I don't know if you guys can even see this. I don't think I can zoom in. Uh, but what we have here is C, G, F, and A minor. Those are the four chords we have for the whole song. Uh, I see a couple in here that are like C over B, uh, which is just a C. If ever you see a chord that says C over B or C over anything, that over chord is basically just a, um, a bass note. Uh, there is a, a ver that is a variation, a chord that you can actually play, but you can get away with just playing uh, the first chord of that. So in this case, it would be the C. But uh, I don't want to play it in C. I want to transpose this uh, to E. Uh, I would rather play it in E. It's just a, a key that I'm, I would rather sing this song in. So if you get to that place, you find a song on the internet like this, uh, you can copy and paste this into Word or something, uh, and you don't like the key that it's in, you can always change it. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to show you what I use uh, to change a key. So if this is the uh, 
transposing cheat sheet that I have. Uh, if you if you get the transposing, I mean, if you get the chord family cheat sheet that I have, you'll also get this cheat sheet. But I want to show you how I use this to transpose a song. You can use it uh, to help you know where to put your capo uh, if you want to play in a certain key. But you can also use it just to transpose a song in general. So let's say, uh, for instance, this song, we have it right now. It's in the key of C, but I want to play it in the key of E. So I could either put my capo, if I look here, if I should go ahead and show you, let me zoom in, maybe you can see it a little better. Uh, if I go ahead and show you, uh, this is the C chord family down here. Okay, so this top section in blue is the C chord family. Uh, now if I go ahead and put the capo on the, what is it, the fourth fret, I can play this song using the C chord family and I'd be playing it in the key of E, okay? So I could do it that way, but I'd rather use the E chords uh, in this instance, um, just because I wanna demonstrate it to you. So if I wanna just play the song with the E chord family, all I have to do is uh, find the E chord family down here. So this, starting with the E coming across, this is the E chord family. So I can look at uh, the chords that are on the song and then just replace them with the ones here in this row. So instead of a C, I can play an E. Instead of an F, I can play an A. Instead of a G, I can play the B. And instead of A minor, I can play C sharp minor. And those are the four chords for this song. So that's what I'm gonna do, and uh, I went ahead and d did that for you, and we've got this, uh, I, I copied the, that text to put it in Word, and I just typed it all in here. So this is what the song looks like in the key of E. Um, so you see I've got E here, I've got uh, B suspended, uh, I have A2, and I have C sharp minor. Now you can play just a regular B, you don't have to play B suspended, you can play a regular B, you can play a regular A, uh, but these are the chord variations that I use, uh, which you will find uh, on my cheat sheet. Um, and let me briefly go over that. I told you uh, those of you that are on my, uh, li my email list that I'm going to be answering the question, do you have to learn bar chords? Okay, the dreaded bar chord. Do you have to learn it? Well, no, obviously, that's my answer. Uh, you can learn bar chords. Uh, you are not an evil person if you learn how to play bar chords, okay? That's totally fine. But honestly, I do not use bar chords. I've been playing for 15 years. I play in front of hundreds of people every week, and I do not use bar chords, okay? Uh, so it's, you can be a good guitarist and not use bar chords, okay? So if you want an alternative to bar chords, there is. And that's what uh, I'm using here. So I wanna show you, it, bar chords normally show up in the E chord family. Uh, so, for instance, we have, let's, hopefully you can see, let me, uh, let me zoom in here. So, uh, in the E chord family, you have E, and you also have B, and the traditional way to play a B would be a bar chord, which is placing your first index finger completely across all six strings, and then pressing down uh, over here, either with your pinky, some people like to use their pinky, or all, or the other three remaining fingers, uh, and that would be your B. So let me strum that for you. Okay. Uh, I'm not very good at playing bar chords because I never do them. But uh, anyway, that is the traditional way to play a B. Uh, also in the E chord family, you have a C sharp minor. Uh, you have F sharp minor and G sharp minor. Those are all the traditional ways to play it as a bar chord. Uh, but all I have variations for all of those because I don't like bar chords uh, for a couple of reasons. First, they are difficult to play, but secondly, they don't sound good, in my opinion, they don't sound as good as the variations when you play them together within the family. So if we're playing a song in E and we're playing, uh, you know, we're, trans we're, we're making the progression changes from E to B, C sharp to A, or whatever the progression is, it sounds a lot better, in my opinion, to have those uh, variation chords, those open chords, because there's more in common between those chords, and they just fit better together. Uh, if you're trying to make those transitions from a bar chord, 
the the it's so different from one chord to the next. Your your every single string is changing. Uh, so it just makes uh, there's kind of a separation in that transition. Doesn't sound as good in my opinion. Uh, so I'm gonna play. I want to play the pro the uh, progression for the chorus for this song right now. And I'm going to first use um, the bar chords, uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and play it the other way with the chord variations, and I just want you to hear the difference. So we have uh, A, B, E, and C sharp minor. Okay, so that's with the bar chords. Um, that was awful <laughs> because I'm not good at bar chords. Uh, but now I want to play it with you, uh, play it for you with the chord variations. Okay, so I'm going to start with the uh, again. I'm going to use an A two. So if the traditional A, you're using the three fingers, uh, your second, third, and fourth finger on the second fret over here. But for the A two, we're just going to be using our second and third finger uh, on the D and the G string. Okay. And what's nice about this, it makes a transition so much easier because we're going to be going from this A2 to the B suspended. And all we're going to do for that is just slide that A2 up two frets, and then we're going to put our first finger down uh, on the second fret of the A string. It's an incredibly easy transition. And then going from the B, if we were going to go to the C sharp minor, this chord, the shape stays exactly the same, and we just slide that whole thing up two frets. Okay. So there's literally no change in the shape of your chord uh, for those transitions. So it's so much easier to make those changes. Uh, so let me play uh, that same progression, the A, B, E, C sharp minor, uh, using the chord variations. Okay, so there you go. Uh, I think that sounds a lot better, um, partially because I can't play bar chords, but there you have it. Let me go through the, uh, I still got a few things. I want to go over the strum pattern here in a second, but I just want to check out what you guys are saying. Uh, yeah, Roshan, I see uh, I have lots of difficulties in playing the bar chord. Uh, yeah, so hopefully I answered some of your questions there. Uh, in terms of bar chords. They are very difficult. Uh, you can learn them. I'm not saying you shouldn't learn them. You can learn them if you want. Um, I learn them eventually uh, and I have them in my library of chords. I guess you could say I know how to play them. But honestly, uh, when I'm playing um, for other people, I never use bar chords just because I don't like them. Uh, so hopefully that'll give you some uh, an alternative, something else you can use there. Uh, let's see. Uh, um, let's see. Mm. Okay, uh, no questions yet. Other than that, okay, so let me go ahead. I want to go over the, um, the strum pattern for the song for you guys real quick. So the strum pattern for this is going to be uh, 8 beats per measure. And strumming in general, I know that can be a challenge um, for beginners. But in, in, when talking about strumming, you know, if, if you've ever taken a music class, you've got songs. Music in general has uh, what's called time signatures. So if you've ever seen a, a sheet music uh, where you have all the individual notes, you'll have a time signature off to the left, which will either be something like 4-4 time or 6-8 time or 3-4 time or, or something like that. With the rhythm guitar, you really don't need to know that information. What you do need to understand is the concept of beats and measures. Okay, so you have a certain number of beats that fit within a measure, and that measure is repeated. And uh, if you've ever tapped your foot to a song, you can strum to a song, okay? So when you're tapping your foot to a song, those are the beats. And you're always going to be strumming down on the beats, 
and you're going to be strumming up on the upbeats. That's how it's always going to be. Down on the beats and up on the upbeats. Okay? So if we were to count the beats of a song, you would have one and two and three and four, like that. Uh, and if you were strumming, it would be down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Now, a strum pattern is simply taking that idea and it's uh, different strum patterns have different combinations of those down and up strums. Okay, sometimes we'll remove some up strums, sometimes we'll move down strums, and we'll make patterns out of that. Okay, so the pattern that we're going to use for this song, again, this is going to be an eight beat strum pattern. So we have eight beats within the measure, and then that repeats again. Okay, so that we're going to use a very, very basic strum pattern, which is just down strums the whole time. So for all eight beats, we have down strums only, and then we're going to have an up strum at the very end of the measure right before we repeat, okay? So we have, <clears throat> again, down strums for eight beats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we come up at the end after eight on and, and then we repeat. One, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and one, and two, like that, okay? So I'm going to play that very slowly. Oh, also, uh, that, that's pretty monotonous. We want to add some dynamics to that. So to make it sound better, like we normally do, um, with 8-beat strum patterns, what, what I like to do to add dynamics is strum harder on the 1st, the 4th, and the 7th beat. Okay, So that would sound like this. If I just mute my strings, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 1, 2, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one. Okay, like that. So that's the basics of that strum pattern. I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna do do it very slowly uh, while I play the that transition again for the chorus. Okay. So again, it starts with the A two, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so you see each one of those chords for this song is, is lasting one measure each. So at the end of eight, we're making the switch. And the way, when you make the switch is going to be on the up strum. Okay, so at the very end, after eight, we're coming up on and, and right as we're coming up on and, we're making the switch. And we need to be have our hand in the new chord as we're coming down on one, on the new measure. Okay, so we have eight and one okay so that gives you when you're playing at full speed it gives you uh, less than a second to make the switch but when you're practicing you want to start off very slow and you practice the song very slow like we just did one two three four five six seven eight and one okay and you make the switch like that Another thing I wanted to mention about these, uh, these what the, some people call these power chords, this B and this C sharp minor, to get uh, to to play it well, a problem a lot of people have when they try to play this chord because it's kind of a stretch, uh, is they'll accidentally be laying their fingers across the bottom string down here, and they'll be muting those strings at the bottom because the bottom two strings uh, are open and they need to be resonating. Uh, so a good way to, uh, to clear that up is to use your actual thumb and to be pressing against the back of the neck and pull your hand away. Uh, arch your, your, take your wrist and pull it away from the fretboard, from the neck of the guitar, okay? And if you do that, kind of pick your hand up for these chords, it'll help your fingers come straight down on those strings uh, and not mute the other strings behind it, okay? So that's for that B and the C sharp. And the other two chords like this in the E chord family are your, uh, your G sharp and your F sharp, okay? So instead of that G sharp bar chord, we can play it like that. The same thing with the F sharp. Instead of the bar chord, we can play it like that in open position. All of those are on, on the cheat sheet. So uh, 
Let me double check, see if I've got any questions from you guys. <clears throat> yeah, I know vent strumming can be a, a big challenge. I'm hoping that uh, these types of strum patterns, what I like to do in all of my lessons is, is pick strum patterns that are very simple. And those down strum only strum patterns are great places to start. Now see, we don't have to use that strum pattern for this song. As long as you're using an eight beat strum pattern, uh, you could use any strum pattern. Okay, so for instance, um, we could use, uh, let's see. So that would be down, up, up, down, up, up, down, down, up. That's a much more complicated strum pattern and the up strums are only coming on the up beats, uh, and a lot of people have trouble with that because they have to eliminate down strums, and that can get a little confusing. And they like to, uh, so a lot of people will make the mistake of strumming up on beats instead of in between beats. So, but those can come later. You don't have to use that strum pattern for this song, okay? You can use just the down strum, strum pattern. Uh, there's a tutorial I have out on YouTube right now, um, how far I'll go from the Moana uh, the movie Moana, the Disney movie Moana. And I got a lot of people on there saying they're having trouble with the, the strum pattern and I probably should have not used that strum pattern on the tutorial uh, because it's a bit more complicated than normal. And so I, I'm telling these people in, in, the, in the, uh, you know, the comments that they don't have to use that strum pattern, they can use the down strum only strum pattern to get started. Uh, and then later as you get the feel of strumming, uh, you can throw in those extra, those different strum patterns. Okay, let's see. Uh, so Jeff, uh, after strum, just want to see fingering on the A2, then the B suspended in C sharp. Can you exaggerate the movement slowly so I can see the fingers change? <clears throat> uh, so if we start with the A2, let me see if I can get closer so you can, you can see cl more clearly. Uh, and also, let me see here. Okay, so we've got the, uh, the A2. And again, for these chords, uh, like for the E, I have my, my hand kind of wrapping around the back of it like this. But when I get to those power chords, uh, my hand comes on the back. My thumb comes on the back of the neck, okay? And that way I can get my, my palm away from the neck of the guitar, okay? Uh, and I use that even for the A2 because that A2 is very similar. It's just like the, it's just like the, other, part, the other power chords except uh, that first finger is not down because there's no more frets, right? Uh, so for the A2, uh, and remember you always press on the sweet spot of the fret, uh, which is as close as you can get to the top half of the fret of the you know the fret you're playing on you don't want to press in the middle of the fret which would be here you want to press more towards the top and that's where you're going to get the cleanest sound with the least amount of pressure okay so if we start on that a2 right here when we make that switch i'm picking my fingers up i'm still they're still touching the string i'm just kind of releasing the pressure and then I'm just sliding them up two frets and I'm putting my first finger down. So we're going from here to there and then the C sharp minor. Well, in the, in the, for this song, we're gonna go to E. So we got A, B suspended, and then we have the E like that. So from, from B to E, I'm picking my first finger up and I'm, it's dropping down two strings and my second and I mean my third and fourth finger are coming up a string each. Oh, sorry. Second and third finger are coming here. So we're going from the B to the E, right? And these transitions, if you're having a problem with a particular transition, just take that transition and practice it back and forth, okay? Go from B to E if you're having a trouble with that and back and forth until you can do it fast. Okay, you just keep going. Uh, repetition is key when you're practicing. Okay, so we're going from B suspended to the E, and then from the E, we're going to the C sharp minor. So we're going to put our pinky down, pick up our first and second finger, we're going to slide those two up, and then put our first finger down up here on the fourth fret. Okay, so from E to C sharp minor. Okay. Uh, let's see. Check what's 
different between uh, difference. What's the difference between minor and major chords? Um, if you so a scale, you also ask about scales. Uh, the scale of a song, um, uh, or the scale of, of music in general. There's so many scales out there, but most songs are written. Um, most songs are written in major in the major scales. Okay, so you've got if you've the best way to know this to to, uh, to visualize this is with a piano. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a piano on my screen, uh, or I would show you. But um, a piano uh, is a great diagram for a scale, right? Because you've got um, you've got the keys mapped out for you in black and white. Uh, and so you've got uh, like for instance the G scale. You have G. A, B, C, D, E, and F sharp. You've got seven notes for every scale, okay, and then it repeats. So you have G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and then it repeats with G again, okay. Uh, so music, in terms of the alphabet, you have from A to G, and then it starts over, but some of those have sharps, right? You have, um, uh, you start with A, but then you have A sharp uh, with I wish I could show you on the piano because it make more sense. The black keys are the sharps. Okay, so with a piano, uh, you have three black keys and then a space, and then you have two black keys and then a space, and then you have three and then two, and those are your sharps. So you have two uh, notes that don't have sharps. Okay, so you have B that doesn't have a sharp, and you have E that doesn't have a sharp. Every other key has a sharp. Okay. Um, so when it comes to, um, to minor chords, let me give you an example here. This is an A major. Okay. Uh, this is the traditional way to play A major, right? We're, we were using A2, but this is the traditional way to play the A major. Uh, for an A minor, all we're doing is we're, we're removing that pinky on the B string, and we're going to put our first finger down behind it on the first fret of the B string. And that's our minor chord, right? So we're going from the major to the minor, okay? And same thing with the E, you have an E major here, and all we're gonna do is we're gonna take that first finger and pick it up, and that's an E minor. So we got E major, E minor. Right? Uh, now, you. The, the, all of that kind of stuff, um, you know, how chords are constructed and those kind of things uh, can get very overwhelming for people. You don't really need to know that information. Uh, I mean, if you want to, that's great. That's, you know, a lot of people find that fun to, to know that kind of stuff, and that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, but um, in terms of, of what chords to play, there's a lot, there's only certain chords are going to be played together. You're never going to play an A and an A minor together in the same song. Okay, um, certain chords just fit together, and that's how popular music is played. It sounds good to our ears, and that's what we're used to, and that's what everybody uses, right? Um, so that's where um, you know the the chords that I have on the cheat sheet. Uh, there's 18 total, and there are six in each chord family, which uh, you know the, the three chord families are G, C, and E, and again those are those are the major. Uh, the major scales. So if we're looking, for instance, the G, the G scale, uh, I mentioned you have G, A, B, C, D, E, and F sharp. Those are seven chords, I mean seven notes. With the G chord family, you have the G chord, you have the same chords, you're, I mean you have the same notes, but you're using chords instead of notes, right? You have the G chord, which is here. You have the A chord. Uh, you have the B chord. What did I say? B, G, A. You have B minor. Uh, you have C. You have D. You have E minor, and then you have F sharp diminished, which is an awful sounding chord. We're not going to use F sharp diminished. Uh, in fact, you never use the seventh chord. Uh, when you're playing the guitar. Uh, I don't even know why, you just don't. You, you never use it, no songs ever use it. Um, and so that's why we have six chords in each chord family. Now the, the, most popular so the most popular chord families for the guitar, there's five of them. There's G, uh, E, and C, which are the ones on my cheat sheet, but you also have um, A and D. Those are two other popular chord families to learn for the guitar. Um, I, I removed those from the cheat sheet because you don't 
have to learn them. You can use your capo to transpose and you never have to go higher than the fourth fret uh, in order to play in any, any major key. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can definitely learn the A and D chord families if you want to. Um, but again, they each, each one of those families just have six chords uh, in them. Okay, So I hope that, uh, I don't know if I even answered that question. I kind of went off on a rabbit trail. Uh, let me see if we've got any other questions. <clears throat> yeah, uh, a good finger exercise for stretching for notes. Yeah, so uh, a good practice to get used to is something that I like to call muscle memorization. Uh, you might get very tired. Your fingers may get uh, very sore from pressing down so much uh, on the strings. One of the practices that you can use is, is don't press down on the strings. Just get your fingers in the position of the chord. So for the song, uh, we're using the E chord family. So you get your fingers in the position of the chord, let's say in this case E, okay? And then once we're in that position, we're just going to switch to the next chord, an A. Uh, and then we'll go to B, and then we'll go to C sharp, and then we'll go to the F sharp, I mean G sharp and the F sharp. And you go through all the chords in that family, uh, just touching the strings, okay? And that's going to be great practice on helping your fingers memorize those positions because you don't need to just memorize the position of that particular chord, but you also have to get your fingers to memorize the transition from one chord to the next, okay? You can play a song uh, that's, uh, you know, a particular transition, you know, maybe for, the, for instance, this song, you're playing A, B, E, and C sharp, but you've never practiced the transition from C sharp to E. The next song you learn, you might have to know that transition, and you'll find that even though you know the E position very well, and you know how to get there from B, when you try to get there from another chord, uh, it throws you off. So knowing how to get to a chord from another chord uh, is also good practice. Uh, so you can do something that I call the, um, the launching point technique. You take E and you go to every other chord in the chord family from E. So I'll go from E to A, back to E to B, back to E to C sharp, back to E to G sharp, back to E to F sharp, and back. Okay, so you're practicing every single possible transition you can have within that chord family. Okay, that's a great practice. Uh, and again, it's just gonna take repetition. You do it over and over and over again and you'll get faster and faster. Okay, your fingers will start to memorize where they need to go. Um, and at first, especially these power chords, uh, that stretch uh, is gonna be a challenge, but it's just gonna come by practicing. And make sure that you get uh, a clean sound from all your strings. You wanna strum through each one alone and make sure they're all clean. If they're not, if you've got a muted, chain, uh, muted string like that, you stop on that string and you get it right. Uh, and remember, you want to check, uh, make sure you're pressing on the sweet spot of the fret, you're coming down perpendicular to the strings so that you're not muting the strings behind it, okay? That's a common problem is if you're pressing down on a string and you're coming in at an angle, you'll be muting the strings behind it. So you want to come in straight down on the string so that not only that string is clear, but also the ones behind it are clear, okay? So you want to make sure you're coming down perpendicular, you're on the sweet spot of the fret, you got good counter pressure on the neck of the guitar, okay? Uh, and you can check all of those three. Those are some uh, uh, three-part checklists you can go through if you're getting a muted string, okay? Uh, and so go through each one of your strings, make sure they're all sounding clear. Like that, okay? before you move on to the next chord. And when your fingers are tired and they're bleeding, hopefully not, then you can stop pressing down and just practice that uh, muscle memorization technique, right? That's a great practice as well. Cool, all right, are there any other questions? Let me see. <clears throat> all right, I don't see any other questions in here as of now. Uh, but uh, those are some great practices for you. Let me go ahead and play the song. Uh, have you ever seen the rain? I'm going to play it from the beginning. Uh, let me go ahead and pull up that screen so you can see the chord chart. There we are. And let me see if I can get you to see me better as well. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to play the song. Uh, again, this 8-beat strum pattern using the E chord family, all right? 
Oh, I wanted to also tell you about uh, palm muting. This is something you can do. Um, it's a, a little technique where you can use the, the palm of your hand over here to kind of touch the, the strings at the bottom and mute it. That's what I use for verses, the verses of a song. That way I've got somewhere to go for the chorus and I can strum fully for the chorus, right? So we've got palm muting for the verses and I'm only strumming like the top three or four strings. Right? And then when I get to the chorus, I'll strum open like that. And I'm still using the dynamics for that strum pattern where I strum a little bit harder on the first, fourth, and seventh beats of the song. Okay, So I'm going to be using that palm muting for the verse as well. All right. Someone told me long ago There's a calm before the storm I know it's been coming for some time When it's over, so they say It'll rain a sunny day I know Shining down like water I wanna know Have you ever Obviously, there's another verse to that, uh, which you would go to the verse and then you would repeat the chorus again. But that's how the song sounds. Uh, I hope that will help you guys. Don't forget, you can uh, get the chord chart for that song uh, in the link on the video. Okay, uh, so you can grab that. Uh, also, grab the chord sheet. Uh, I mean, the cheat sheet. If you didn't get that already, if you don't have that already, uh, that's something great for you to have that you can keep around. Uh, print it out. You can keep it uh, with you. Keep it by your guitar, especially that transposing cheat sheet. Hopefully that'll come in handy for you guys. Um, all right. Uh, if you got, uh, I hope this, after I uh, turn this live feed off, I hope I can still uh, connect with you guys through this live chat, I'm hoping. Um, if not, you can connect with me on Facebook uh, at my, you know, my Facebook page at Simplified Guitar uh, or on my website as well, simplifiedguitar.com. Uh, all right, guys, I will see y'all later. I hope you enjoyed this live lesson. I'm going to try and maybe start doing these uh, more often if you guys really enjoy it. Um, and I will see y'all later. Let me see if I can figure out how to turn this off. <laughs> hmm, where's the off button? Hmm. All right, I think I found it.